Hi, my name is Chris Yankee, and I'm a professor of wildlife ecology at the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point. And today I'd like to introduce you to some of the squirrels that you might encounter during your squirrel research. Squirrels can be classified in three ways. Uh, there are tree squirrels, ground squirrels, and flying squirrels. Flying squirrels are nocturnal, so you're unlikely to encounter them if you're doing your experiment during the day or you're directly observing squirrels. So we'll focus on the tree squirrels and the ground squirrels. There are some really charismatic tree squirrels. This is Abert's squirrel. It's a really beautiful squirrel. Uh, this is from the Flagstaff, Arizona area. Um, if you're lucky enough to live down there. Around uh, many colleges, cam college campuses like the University of Oklahoma, uh, when I was walking around campus at Kansas State, there were a lot of these. This is the, the large fox squirrel. So it's one of the largest tree squirrels that we have in the country. Uh, and it's got a lot of red um, on it. And so that would be a fox squirrel. Sometimes it's confused with the eastern uh, gray squirrel. This is the one that we have commonly running around on our campus here in central Wisconsin. And sometimes these gray squirrels have a color morph that's a bit darker. Uh, and so it's a melanistic squirrel. And sometimes people think this is a different squirrel, but it's just a dark version of the, the eastern gray squirrel. And then we have uh, this smaller, beautiful squirrel. This is a, a red squirrel. And so this would be the squirrel that's common in some of the more coniferous forests in the area. So if you've got a lot of pine and spruce and hemlock uh, in your area, um, look for these little critters. Um, they're pretty vocal and uh, they don't stay put for you to do a nice observation, but they might be on your seed trays. I think sometimes we forget that ground squirrels are also squirrels and so they are things that we can observe. They are certainly species that might be in our seed trays. They come in a variety of shapes and patterns and sizes. Ones that you might not consider um, off the bat are the prairie dogs and so fun fact these are not dogs, these are ground squirrels. And so we have both uh, white-tailed prairie dogs, um, a little bit more of a restricted range. Uh, so you'd find these in, in Colorado and in that area. And then the, the broader range here in the black-tailed prairie dogs, as you can see with the, the black tip here, um, on this tail uh, through, the, through the Plains states, uh, from the Dakotas all the way down into Texas. So those are ground squirrels. Um, another animal that we don't necessarily consider are the marmots, and so this is the woodchuck or the groundhog, um, both common names for marmotomonax. Uh, and so this is uh, the largest ground squirrel that we have here uh, in Wisconsin. Here's a California ground squirrel. So these again have a restricted range, but where you find them, uh, for example, those of you doing your studies in Bonneray Bay, um, this is what you have on your campus, the California ground squirrel. And then there are uh, a lot of spotted striped and chipmunk type squirrels. This is one of my favorites. This is the 13 line ground squirrel, more of a grassland species. Um, I have a family of these living in my uh, in my backyard, uh, but around here is something that you might be finding on your seed trays. This is a, a striped squirrel. This is called a white-tailed antelope squirrel. Uh, looks a little bit like a chipmunk, but just you know, for, from a Midwestern perspective, because we don't have these here. Uh, but yeah, antelope squirrels look a little bit like this, but here's a common chipmunk. So your chipmunks are also ground squirrels. Uh, and there's a variety of chipmunks uh, throughout the United States 
In the eastern U.S., this would be your common one. This is the eastern chipmunk. Uh, and here in Wisconsin, we have the eastern chipmunk, um, and it's out competing this critter. This is called a least chipmunk. Um, this is more of a northern species, uh, coniferous forests, uh, but it also gets over into the Rocky Mountains. It's smaller than the eastern chipmunk, and it has stripes that go all the way to the base of the tail. But what you want to do is use your guides here to figure out what species might be in the area and then kind of figure out what tree squirrels, what ground squirrels, uh, and then uh, just make, make that list. Not everyone's lucky enough to have a research and teaching collection of mammals on campus, but you can go out and get some field guides. And I would recommend you get a good national field guide uh, for mammals. And this is one of my favorites. It's by Roland Kays and Don Wilson. And it's just a really beautifully illustrated guide that will tell you about all the squirrels um, in the U.S., but also those squirrels that are in your area. If you want a little bit more natural history, you can move to a regional field guide. So this is a really good example of a regional field guide. This is the Mammals of the Great Lakes region by Alan Curta. And I've been using this in my courses for 20 years. He just updated it to a third edition. Um, it's, it's, it's wonderful. Um, it's gonna have uh, all these guides, if they're recent, they'll have the current taxonomy um, and a little bit about the animal and maybe some other cool tricks on how to distinguish them. A little bit more detail than the national guide. And then you can move, if your state has a state field guide, you could move to a state field guide and it would even have more um, detailed maps almost to the county level of where you might find these, uh, the different squirrels. And so this is a good example, Schmidley's uh, Mammals of Texas.